It's actually incredibly mesmerizing, kind of awesome. And it's also tremendously powerful. In a way, it's got beauty and it's got death written all over it. It's just a transformation right there where you are. That's kind of what I like about it, that I'm still in the one spot and the landscape has changed incredibly dramatically. This is a painting I made, literally looking out the front door onto the quay. The door is a garden door, so it's not attached to the house. So you can see this side of the door, so to speak, is an area that you walk into and then it has steps up. So in order to get out onto the quay, we need to walk down some steps. I made this during one of the, or after one of the really heavy floods because it was just so, so striking when I opened the door and the water was in already and then you look out and the landscape has been transformed completely. Also, there is a painting by Willem de Kooning, a, a, quite a famous painting, it's called Door to the River. And I always loved that painting. I suppose maybe more so because of the idea of it, uh, the door to the river. And of course, the way it was painted as well, but in a way I wanted for a long time to make a painting myself about a door to the river. So this painting follows on from the last painting because it's just beyond the front door. So it's looking out onto the quayside during one of the heavy floodings. This is Neil in the boat going for briquettes. The painting is called Going for Fuel, I May Be Some Time. And I added the, the sentence, I may be some time, because I've read quite a lot about the Antarctic exploration, Scott of the Antarctic, Tom Crean and Captain Titus Oates. And that sacrifice, or desperate sacrifice, of that man, Captain Oates, when all the men were trapped in the Antarctic and they had no food. And he, in a way, made the ultimate sacrifice because he knew that if he stayed there, they would all die. But he knew that if he left there'd be enough food for, say, three of them that were left. So he decided to go, and effectively, he was going out to die. So the last words he said to his companions were, I'm going outside, I may be some time. And they knew that he wasn't going to come back. So somehow this became part of my thinking about climate change. Having been reading so much about it, watching the river rising, paying a lot of attention to flooding in different countries, burnings in different countries, devastation in, in other countries, and devastation in Ireland. I thought about people going out and flooding and waters rising, and in a way, who knew if they would ever come back? In 2015, Joan Burton was the Tanishta at the time, which is the Deputy Prime Minister. And because the flooding had become so widespread and heavy, the minister and her entourage decided to go and visit people in flooded areas. So she came to Thomastown. They were being brought on a tour around the town, down the quayside, in, the, in that boat. Unfortunately, just when they got to the edge of that wall there, the boat toppled over and both the minister and Anne Phelan fell into the water. But they were very good about it and they got up and um, survived the fall. Not long after, Minister Joan Burton actually fell from government and ironically it was due to a protest over water charges. It was quite an event and it happened literally outside the front door here. So I decided to make a painting about it. I don't know if any politicians had visited areas during flooding before. It was because this flood was actually the biggest flood that we had ever had in Thomastown, where it filled the streets, um, came into the main street, came in the back doors, everybody, the whole town was out. And areas in the town which hadn't flooded in my lifetime, though previously they had, I believe, um, everybody was flooded out. So in a way, it was a national disaster. So that's what brought the ministers down. This is a painting I made based on uh, photographs I took from up high at the back of where we live, looking down onto the car park. And it's also looking down onto buildings and fields behind. The car park is flooded out, the fields behind are flooded out. And the building that, that we see, the sort of curved building, is ac actually the garage owned by our late neighbour, Jim Phelan. And to the right of that is another man called Jim, who's the undertaker. Jim died during COVID times. Jim Myler died very shortly afterwards. And 
there was another Jim, Jim Caulfield, who was the bus driver and beekeeper. And it, I called uh, the painting a, a savage flood and what use is geography now. I imagined the three Jims looking at this scene and asking the question, well, what use is geography now? when the landscape is so transformed by flooding that we can't really see where we're going. All the old landmarks are gone. I suppose it's just so powerful, an image. The thought of this flooding transforming the landscape is so biblical and it's happening and we're, we're watching it happening and, and there's nothing we can do about it. In my own mind, I've, I've made this painting uh, a dedication to the three Jims who are no longer here. Jim Phelan, who owned the garage, was able to tell whether uh, flooding was going to happen through looking down into the pit in his garage. His son told me that he'd put a piece of paper down into the pit. If the paper started to turn clockwise, Jim knew there'd be a flood. So then he'd tell Jim Myler and Jim Myler would tell us and then they'd start to get sandbags. You know, it makes me think of the power of local knowledge and how important that is. And, and when it's gone, it, it becomes even more important because while we appreciated it at the time, we appreciate it much more when it's gone. So this is one of my early drawings about flooding on the river. I've done a lot of drawing, trying to capture actual water in motion, just the effects of water rushing and rising. It's a small enough drawing. It's about 40 by 50 centimetres on paper using charcoal chalk pastel and probably water. Well, this is an image from the studio. I'm actually pouring solvents onto the canvas. What I do is I mix white spirit with paint or at least put little amounts of paint into the white spirit, sometimes no paint. And I pour it onto paint that I've already um, put onto the canvas and then I leave it overnight and or I leave it for a couple of hours and I see what it does. I thought, well, how am I going to make the painting look as if there's water flowing on the painting? And I thought, well, I could try and paint that, but it would be it might be quite stilted. So I somehow got the idea of if I was to pour a um, very thin solvent of paint onto the paint and somehow it might replicate water because it'll flow in ways that I can't control. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes I'm in and out, you know, every couple of hours during the night to see what's happening to the painting when I do that. So I'll tilt it maybe one way or tilt it another. Then when it's dry enough, I'll lift it and see if it works. And if it doesn't, just wipe it all off and maybe do it again. This is a painting I made a good few years ago and it's a painting based on flooding in the car park. You see the reflection of the building. There was the old uh, CYMS building, so that was Catholic Young Men's Association. So at the time I painted it, there was a lot of talk about the Catholic Church, and the Catholic Church was basically toppling and had been toppling for a long time. So it seemed to me quite poignant, an image when I saw it and took photographs of it, that this was once an edifice for the Catholic Young Men's Association, but all was left of it was a reflection in a flood. This is a painting I made about flooding on the railway tracks outside Carrick and Shore, where I grew up. The railway tracks were a place that I went walking a lot as a teenager. I saw this image online and I just really wanted to make a painting about this because of the memory that it held for me. Well, the train tracks are very close to Carrick on Shore, but they're on a road called Craig Road, which just up about a mile, Bob Dylan came to stay with the Clancy brothers in the 60s. So I was trying to think of a title for it and I came up with the title of using one of Bob Dylan's songs. So the painting is called No Train Coming, Flood on the Tracks. I grew up on the corner of the quayside in Carrick on Shore for the first, say, 10 years of, of my life. And the quayside heavily flooded regularly. I suppose it was such a powerful thing and powerful part of my life growing up. but. Also, I remember my father talking about flooding in the Far East because my father had been in the RAF in Singapore and somehow we, we saw imagery of flooding in places like Bangladesh. 
I was aware that there was flooding in other parts of the world and not just in Carrick on shore. This painting relates in a way to the uh, previous painting that I made about the railway tracks in Carrick on shore. Was, this is an image I came across of railway tracks in could be Bangladesh, somewhere in India, I'm not really sure. Uh, the tracks are flooded, the whole land is flooded, uh, you see trees rising up out of the water in the distance. So it was a really striking image and just in a way mirrored the image of the flooding in Carrick on shore, which brings it home to you even more so that this is not just happening in one or two areas, it's happening everywhere all over the world. So this is a painting I made from an image I saw and it was around the time when there was a lot of talk about um, Rohingya refugees coming to Ireland. And it combined with another painting I had made about Clare Galway, where I was actually stuck in Clare Galway, outside Galway uh, one time in a flood. And I, I really felt very anxious. I, I had no idea what to do. And I didn't have a phone that worked at the time. So I just, I suppose, had to wait it out and crawl my way out of heavy flooding there. So I read that Rohingya refugees were coming to Ireland and that they were being brought to Galway and places like that. So I made this painting and it's called Welcome to Clare Galway because I imagined that, you know, you expect to go from one devastated country and be welcomed into somewhere that's actually a bit better. But because of heavy flooding and climate change, it really was no better. What, what I'm doing really is I'm painting what's around me and what I see and what I see at my window because I live right on the River Noor. I watched the cows coming down to the river to drink and uh, I began to think about cows and how long they've lived on the earth and I read somewhere some scientific study that uh, because cows had already survived since Neolithic times 5,000 years ago that if all the animals that uh, are threatened at the moment with extinction because of climate change die out, that the only animals left on the planet will be cows. And I thought, wow, that's just mind-blowing. So somehow I'd been watching these animals all the time and I, I wanted to make some paintings about them. So this is the first one I did. This is a painting called Imagine Life Without Art. So I saw this again as a very poignant image and titled it Imagine Life Without Art, where I began to think about the value of art in particular in, in relation to uh, climate change and heavy flooding and how easily things get destroyed and how quickly and suddenly what might be really valuable art could be destroyed in seconds. We hear a lot about oligarchs from wherever paying absolute millions for paintings, often that nobody ever sees again. They've become so commodified, which is something I think is quite horrendous coupled with the idea then that there are people who are in suffering devastating floods devastating wildfires where their all their belongings are destroyed and you have this massive inequality I began to really think about the value of art in, in, in relation to that and also had some conversations about conservation and, and is it important to conserve artworks for the future in a time of climate change. So I took the title of that painting, Imagine Life Without Art, for the most recent exhibition I had, which was in the Customs House Gallery in, in Mayo. So I, I somehow feel that art does have a contribution to make in the lack of maybe other areas, governments for example, who are very slow maybe to do anything about changing climate or fossil fuels or all the things that we hear about constantly and have been hearing about for the last 10 years. I would be curious to see how art can contribute to that conversation. Images are very powerful. I'm looking at the local and I am a very firm believer in the local just being a microcosm of the global and the universal and what happens here in a small local area is being mirrored throughout the world. From my point of view I, I would like to think that art empowers. It empowers, uh, empowers a person through the creation of it and also the result but it's yet to be seen.